how to make a shunt. I got a multimeter, an automotive light bulb, a little over 12 inches of uh, 10 gauge wire, some strippers, tape measure, knife, and some uh, clip leads, and my battery. So the first is to figure out how many amps this draws. So I have this set up for the amp setting and the probes are in the right place. So just to have a known value here. Hook up the light bulb to my little battery. Right, and then uh, one on this side. Maybe I'll use one of these leads. Okay. And then the amp meter on one end, and the amp meter goes to the negative. So the light is on, and it's 0.17 milliamps. Uh, good. So then, so I know how much load this light draws. So I'll put that aside. Uh, put the meter back on. Millivolt DC. Right. And move this guy over. Right. So should zero out. It's weird. Um, right. So now I take my piece of ten gauge, and this charts online. And, and a piece of ten gauge will do a one millivolt drop over twelve inches. So you know. Cut off a little of the insulation so we can get the clip leads around it. And like that. So this will be one side, and then about 12 inches away. <clears throat> One option you can do before you cut the other end is get a pin, right? So you can kind of probe in around the 12 inch mark, and I'll show you what to do with that. Let me strip off the other end here. For some reason, they put the shunts on the negative end for some. I don't know why, but that's the way I've seen it always done. So I'll just clip my negative end to the battery here, right? I do have a little cheat mark that I made uh, earlier at 12 inches with this uh, little sharpie. So I know from where I cut it before, around here is about 12 inches. Um, exactly, we'll, we'll find out in a minute. So hook in, hook one end up to the meter. <coughs> Sorry, a little <coughs> sick today. All right, and here comes the bulb again. See if I can jam this up in here. There we go. So my bulb, the blink. So now the negative is going to go through, through the wire to the negative. The bulbs come back on. Let's wrap this guy around here. Right. So theoretically, oops, drop my pin. We got the point one seven amps going through there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I want to I want to find that millivolt drop. So I'm going to take my little pin here. I'm going to put it on the other side, and there should be one millivolt of drop. From here to someplace around here, um, <clears throat> and with that, we know we're drawing the 0.17 amps right now. So we should get oh, fuck. There we go. So. I'm going to probe in here until I get my 0.17 
millivolts, right, on this guy. I'm going to point 0.1, point 0.2 millivolts. So I'm going to say that's about my point 0.17. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. Um, so what we can do now, we can put a bigger load on it. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to take the little light bulb away. I'm going to leave the meter connected. So the meter is just connected, so we went to oops, we went to zero again. There's no voltage drop along this, this length of wire here. Didn't even need to tape my tape. So what I have over here is a little inverter. Um, so I'm gonna hook the inverter up to the plus. I'm going to hook the other end up over here, and I'm going to turn it on. Oh, my light bulb is on. So I just turned the inverter on. It's reading 12.4 uh, volts. And this is reading 0.3. So this is telling me this is, re this is drawing 0.3 amps with no load. Turn the inverter off. We go back down to zero. So this meter is set up not to read amps at the moment. Remember, it's set up to read millivolts. I'm still reading the millivolt drop from this end of the wire to that end of the wire. Turn the inverter back on. Go 0.3. So again, so this thing, this this inverter drawing 0.3 uh, amps, just at at idle. That's its idle draw. So I, I don't, actually I don't think that's that bad. Um, all right, so I have a hundred watt light bulb plugged into the inverter. There it is. So turn it on, and so um, minus. Point of uh, a minus 9.5 amps, so I'm drawing 9.5 amps out of this battery right now. So, you know, 110 <coughs> inverter says it's 90 watts uh, at 12 volts. I don't know, is that, is that, even, is that right? <coughs> 100, 100 volt light bulb. <laughs> God. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, let's say that that's pretty close. Uh, what I have also in the back here is just a 12 volt transformer with a rectifier on it. So if I apply a charge, let me get another clip lead. So just to show how the draw on the battery bank changes. You make all, the, all your connections here on the other end of this, this wire so that the, the meter can read it. So I'm going to add a little lead here and I'm going to clip it onto this, this transformer. So we can apply a charge now. So it's still 9.5 amps being drawn by the inverter. When I plug in that little 12 volt transformer oh look at that. So so now we're only drawing 4.7, 4.5 amps from the battery, and that little, I guess, you know, like four, four uh, plus amp transformer is supplying the rest. If I turn off the inverter, okay, so now, now we went from negative draw on the battery to a, a plus three amp going into the battery from that transformer. And I'm still, the only thing connected to, is to the battery is the shunt on the negative side. And I'm measuring that voltage drop.
I mean, you, you'd want to like cut away this wire here, the insulation, and, and secure and solder a, a little, you know, probe point there um, to clip a lead onto or just clip your thing on. It, it's important that the distance stays the same. The 12 inches, I mean, this is really rough. You could, you could probe along here. <coughs> if I had a higher amperage light bulb to start with, <coughs> that probably would have been better. Uh, it can make it a little more accurate to read. Um, but that, that's the general idea. So I know, I know I'm putting in two amps right now into the battery um, from that guy. So the thing, so this is a 10 gauge wire. Um, this meter says it can read 10 amps internally with the, the built-in fuse and stuff. But you know, you could pump. I, I've I've used the same kind of setup. Actually, I have another one that I made a while back, um, and it just has two leads on the other end, and these are the little probes. You know, the, the, these two here are where I, I hook my milliamp meter to to read the drop. And, and I've measured like, you know, 50, 60 amps uh, for brief periods on this just to, to get an idea of certain loads and things. Um, and I just clip that on, on, you know, to either end of whatever, whatever I was testing. One goes to the battery and then one goes to that terminal that was on the battery. It's really, it's really simple. It's not very super accurate, but at least it gives you an idea of which way things are going. Um, and, and how loads are proportional to each other, you know, um, if, if your, your inverter and, and, and things are running and you think a laptop isn't that much load, but you turn it on and all of a sudden it doubles, at least, you know, it, it doubled, so it's at least as much as whatever the inverter was growing. <coughs> I'm sorry for all the coughing. But anyway, that's, that's how you do it. It's, 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 so, it's so simple. It's just a, a length of wire with a, um, a, known, a known gauge and a known distance, and there's charts on the internet to tell you what size wire has what voltage drop over how many inches or how many feet or something like that. 10 gauge is real simple because it's small. 12 inches is one millivolt drop. It's it's ideal. Um, that's it.